They say for any dynasty, you need at least six good players on offense and four on defense. Now, the Montreal Alouettes had that balanced attack in their 1974-79 to 79 dynasty, and this player, boys, he, he would draw so much attention for his great defensive style, his, uh, his unflinching uh, dedication to every play. When Dickie Harris was one of the top players for the Alouettes in that era, uh, they couldn't have done it without him. Now, the native of Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey, first came to major Providence while playing defensive back for South Carolina. Now, not the biggest drink of water, 5'11", 170. He drew a lot of interest from NFL scouts and was eventually taken in the fifth round, uh, 114th overall by the New York Jets. Now, he decided to uh, not sign with the NFL, but to come over to the Montreal Alouettes in 1972. And from there, he left a legacy. He was a CFL All-Star in 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, and a CFL East All-Star from 73 to 1980. Now, uh, eight time again All-Star, won the Grey Cup in 74 and 77, and almost led Montreal to three more during his tenure. Now he's 38 interceptions for 631 yards, our team records, as is his 118 yard interception return. Now if you're American listening to this podcast, you're saying to yourself, how can anybody return interception 118 yards? Well, the big end zone and the CFL back in the day makes that possible. Now eventually retired in 1981, but returned to the Montreal Alouettes franchise when he played at the Concords for three games in 1982. Now, he was eventually inducted into the uh, Canadian Football Hall of Fame in 99. Among that year was also the great Conrad Holloway, uh, who was at a standout in Toronto. Now, on November 20, 2006, he was voted one of the CFL's top 50 players, number 33 on the league's modern era by Canadian Sports Network, TSN. Now, uh, one, people, one person told me many years ago, he said he looked at the lineup of the Montreal Alouettes of the 1970s and were bringing in various American imports, but Randy Rhino and Dickie Harris and Glenn Weir were the backstops of this great defense. Again, the, uh, the victory against Edmonton in 74 and 77 could not have been done uh, without the great defensive players like Dickey. And uh, South Carolina, he was sensation sensation down there too, but one person asked him, he said, did you ever regret not playing in the NFL? Well, he said, you know, playing in Montreal, it's, it's, it's the capital of the CFL, and that thing sums it up. Uh, Montreal was the closest that the CFL had to an NFL, NFL team, and boys, at their peak, they must have had 2 million viewers a week on television. The game was a must-see. Olympic Stadium, you know, the, the big field, and uh, uh, the fan, the support were just tremendous. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a legend of Dickie Harris. If you like what we're doing here with our Montreal Alouette podcast, let us know with a like, comment, or subscribe. And don't forget, if you're an Alouette's fan, you are uh, part of a legacy that goes back literally uh, 75 years plus. It's amazing to be a Montreal Alouette fan. Thanks for listening. Bye.